actually the chapter nine is the process how we develop uh, standards. So it maybe can be short right? because you are not so interested in how to proceed the making standard. But myself and Sunjo is very interested in that process <laughs> because we are doing uh, doing making standard. We will have a, a teleconference, international teleconference tomorrow? No, next week? No, mid-December. Mid mid-December. Okay. Because we just have a CD, CD committee director, Bal Balut, finished in end of October. There are comments coming from Japan, UK, France. China, more than 100 comments. So okay. we are processing how to uh, modify, improve our uh, standard document to arrive at DIS Direct International Standard. There is, a, there will be another ballot, ballot by uh, voting by national bodies. So in. SH4 committee, there are 18, 18 P members, P members. Participating member country, P member country. P member country. Country. Let's say 18, I guess, 18 and all member country. Member country probably seven to eight. I, I can't remember the numbers. So this is a they have a ballot voting uh, right. They participating in their vote. So each country has a one vote. So we have a CD ballot, CD ballot on part fifty-seven. And was passed, passed by a lot. So we are in, in trying to make this one as a DIS, and then finally arrive at IS. But well, there will be one more boat, one more boat. We just passed to another uh, city boat, boating, boating. So we are in the middle. So we have a uh, meetings to to improve these documents based on this comment, yeah, comment. There is a process. All right. So this is the chapters, all the chapters we are approaching here. So next week we will cover the future of the step and more. And this one is divided into four parts. So still, it's very short. Can be short, right? Even though the chapter length is long, but the contents can be smaller. But it's divided into four people, so I'll be short. Anyway, the so organizing and operating the subcommittee for is well, most of them is written in handbook. I uh, sent to you as a separate mail. Or handbook of subcommittee. So I'm trying to cover only up to here this time. So process feature and in old days it is very new I, new ideas. World Wide Web, email, and email explorer. But now it's too popular. Right? So it's already old technology. So uh, SH4 is responsible for developing many standards, but this book is focused only on, on uh, this part, the 1003, this part. This is we call step. But among them, uh, under them, there are 600 parts of it, many. And method, workforce, the human power, and materials, documents, and tools, softwares contribute to the standardization process. 
and meetings. In old days, there has been a four meetings per, per year. Now it is reduced to two times per year. So we have been to Seattle last uh, October, right? Sunjo and myself. Next week meeting will be uh, Norway, Oslo, spring, and then next autumn will be Jeju Island in Korea. And attendance also reducing to say nowadays about 100 people is participate in the meeting. And scope and and complexity and size of, say I say it's 600. So here is the current situation. So in the, in the beginning work, uh, process, they all focus on one, only one number and one subcommittee, even though this is much bigger than other committees work. Actually, this is much bigger than TC work. The technical committees above them, right? the other TC committee is producing less standard. So it is very not ordinary committee. Not ordinary committee. It, was, it is. And also single numbers, single numbers. But nowadays they changed mind to produce more numbers. So recently we, the committee started a new, new numbers. Anyway, Parts library, manufacturing data, management data, process, and integration, and plant industry, oil and gas industry, and dictionary. Dictionary is related to parts library, and quality is also coming. Same standard is uh, converted into different format. Right? So once again, Step itself, 1003, but there are more, the data quality, parts library, but this one is missing in previous slide. The JT, JT has their separate numbers. This is coming from Siemens, Siemens of Germany, JT, and manufacturing management process, uh, oil and gas industry, and this is coming from a uh, building construction industry, this one. Industry foundation class is coming from building construction industry. They have their own TC, but they uh, started this part inside this committee. Now they bring this uh, standard to their technical committee. And Colada is also similar to JT. See, this is for 3D, 3D visualization. UPDM also too, and integration, this is open data service, another one, technical dictionary, and this is data quality, it is coming from automotive industry, SASIG, and exchange of char characteristic data is also separate. So you, are, you, you can see that number of uh, standard numbers is also increasing now. Organization, there is a editing committee and advisory committee group. And in early days, one person, the Mr. Brad Smith of NIST, NIST was a, NIST is still National Institute of Standard and Technology of the United States. He served as a, a chair for a long time. You see that uh, 12 years, right? 12 years. But at the beginning, long time of chairing and then also secretary of the committee. And 1998 has a seven working group and quality committee to manage that more than 100 ongoing as project. Now it is increased into 700 project or standard. So, uh, oh, sorry. In, at the beginning, there has been only one, one working group. 
But in, uh, around, say, six years, they started a new working group two, working group three, working group four, working group five, working group six, and seven, and eight. Right? Now, four is disappeared, five is disappeared, six disappeared, seven disappeared, but still eight and two and three is working. So it's, it's kind of organizational change. And working group 10 started, but now disappeared too. 12 and 11 is still working. There are other uh, special working groups always there. But it is still until 20 years ago. Right? So nowadays, the organization is changed to this shape. So under ISO TC, you know, TC 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, up to now 230 something, right? technical committees. Under them, there is some committees, NC machines, robotics, and manufacturing devices. But one of them is industrial data. And under SH4, we have a working groups. And this is current working groups. Okay. But this is a new working group. Another slide is same one, different formatting. Okay. So SH4 has under TC1A, 184, and there's a working groups. Working groups. Okay. Among them, these, these part is new working groups. This is a rather old working group. Okay. So that's uh, how the committee is mo moving toward the future. Pro process. So organizational structure, the working groups are there, and also there is a procedures. Process, how do we develop? And at the beginning, they are trying to make it a free and open communication, no money. Right? But now it's still because the committee uh, meeting need uh, to provide, say, lunch and dinner sometimes. So you, you, you should pay some registration fees. Also, express language was developed to enable a formal description of requirement of the standard. And in old days, there has been a paper-based standard committee, but SH4 moved to uh, softwares and emails and World Wide Web website. It, it was the first time SCC was the first standard committee in ISO to use email explorers or website and software tools and electronic repository called Solis. Now it is disappeared now. It is moved to ISO website because now ISO itself is uh, uh, use more and more electronic or uh, digital ways of producing standard so that they provide more services than before. But at 30 years ago, there was no such uh, service from ISO itself. At that time, I also use only papers, Xerox papers, prints. Now it's more ISO is also published standard in computer sensible form. Right? Express itself is complete computer interpretable language, right? So that it is IT, heavily IT. And stages of standard, I told you that we are doing, Sunja myself is doing on CD draft and DIS, we are in, in between them. But starting from, this is a whole process of making standards, starting from preliminary working item, PWI, and new proposal, working draft, and CD. So we just finished up to here, in the middle, and then we, we should pro produce DIS and FDIS, and then finally IS. But IS, at this point, you should, the ISO, the head umbrella organization should uh, handle the. 
So World Wide Web website email explorer was uh, first time used by, and so digital exchange because the step itself is a digital exchange, right? And special interest group ex explorer was 50, 50, 50. There are many, and so this was managed by NIST and started in how many years ago? Right? 25 years ago. Funding from the first program of um, military defense. And DIS was free. Right? Up, up to DIS is free. So you can get this CD document free. Okay? This document can be obtained without payment. But after that, IS, IS should be purchased from ISO direct. Okay. So up to the IS version, you can get free access. And AP, Application Protocol Express Specification, Unit of Functionality inside that AP, available on Solis at the time, and International Standard. After that, after publication of International Standard, this component was available. Now they are managing this kind of document in uh, what is the module repository? Right? What is the full name? Module repository. Module repository management module. Stem mod. Stem mod is software. Right? What is the repository name? Stem mod. SMR, STEM mode, and SMR, STEM module repository library. Right? Repository library. So that is, that was Solis, and 20 years ago, now it's converted into this repository too. And other deliverables from ISO, in addition to inter international standard, there has been a technical specification, technical report, and publicly available specification and international workshop agreement. So you can see more coming from this document. They are so something like a guideline, including the handbook of SC4. Directives is coming from ISO Direct or IEC. That is a guideline. How do you manage uh, the standard process? So, Sunja and myself is looking at that kind of di directives and handbook more times than before because we are doing such. All right. No more questions, right? So then we can go on to one in. Okay, uh, I'll start from 9.1.3. Okay, uh, this is about uh, staff if implementers forum. So for this forum, also like uh, the staff. Uh, the implementers forum is only for informal part of SC4. Uh, actually, it's uh, very important to recognize uh, its functions with uh, organizational structure structure of SC4. So the functions of uh, the staff uh, implementers the forum is the first. Uh, it provides an opportunity for the implementers to uh, meet and discuss. The issues uh, surrounding those implement, implement, uh, implementation and implementation implementations and also uh, it helps uh, a standard a standardized group to uh, keep its uh, goals and the goals in perspectives like uh, implementation of the standard and also uh, what's uh, the impact of uh, to uh, implementers, uh, implementers to uh, when the standard is revised, and also uh, like their efforts uh, within the forum will uh, will be uh, uh, co coordinated with SC4 like liaison uh, organizations, 
uh, which uh, work directly with the implementers. And also, like uh, this is about the change uh, management of the standard. So after we produce an international standard, uh, the standards project team often uh, dissents. Uh, the first, like uh, having no uh, the, in this situation, like uh, there is no uh, project team uh, that has caused some like uh, difficulty difficulties in processing and even uh, handling the omissions and errors and even ambiguities. Uh, besides, like here, uh, the modifications to uh, an international standards comes in three uh, forms. The first one is a technical uh, corrigendum. Uh, which is focused on the uh, correction of uh, technical errors or even ambiguities. And the second one is um, an amendment of uh, alteration or even addition to like a previously agreed technical like provisions. And the third one is a kind of uh, revision uh, to the changes that are like a beyond uh, even the scope of technical uh, corrigendum and even the ab uh, amendment. So the last one is about the efforts in SC4 for the change management, uh, which uh, firstly focused on the uh, focused as a part of SC4 quality com community uh, committee, uh, and also uh, for for this committee. Uh, it focused on uh, it's uh, like quite professional for like reviewing the, the preliminary uh, work items and also new work items that have uh, proposed changes to existing international standards. And the second one is uh, SEDS, uh, which is an abbreviation of a standard uh, enhancement and discrepancy system. So for this SEDS. SEDS uh, process uh, like, uh, which manages the, cor uh, the corrections and even additions and also the track uh, and also track uh, tracks the process of those modifications. Uh, this is about the forum in from the test to the tangible transfer. So uh, I see for meetings uh, is uh, usually uh, a high, uh, like a kind of high, pop, uh, like a high technical meeting, uh, which is full of like a particip particip uh, particip participation volume. So normally, like around 220 uh, to 250 people usually join join this meeting, and uh, normally, uh, like uh, it's uh, the numbers of simultaneous meetings. Uh, are given like uh, 20 or 30 days, like uh, mm, every uh, like uh, for the length of any given meeting day, it's uh, usually like uh, lasts for uh, 12 hours, like uh, in the working day. So this is this chart is about the general meeting attendance, like here for Australia even around how many countries? Oh. Yeah, so many countries, <coughs> and like uh, in Korea, normally uh, from 1996 to 2006, Korea joined like five people at that time. Yeah, um, this is about the knowledge transfer. So it's very uh, important to tap into the type knowledge of hardcore and even long term and even experienced experts and transfer this kind of information to new uh, participants. So in order to uh, encourage uh, the information transfer and even several uh, initiatives uh, were started. The first one is uh, the ANSI administrator, uh, which is called like a US uh, PRO with as an SI organization, and also like this is for the IPO host of the SC4 meeting. And the second one is newcomers 
orientation uh, is uh, which is held at the beginning of SC4 meeting, and the third one is uh, uh, the like a uh, concentration of the uh, methods uh, to be developed by SC4 uh, that are released in the forum uh, of S as a technical reports or as it was standing uh, documents. Um, this, this is about the second part, 9.2. Uh, it's called like a uh, exploitation of information technology. Uh, it has like five sections. The first one, the uh, first section is about AP uh, development environment. Uh, which is aimed to uh, maximize the productivity and even quality. So the first uh, section is the birth of APDE, uh, uh, which is uh, focused on addressing the mission critical tasks. And also the second section is about uh, management of document documentation process. And the third one is uh, related to the SGAML environment for staff. Okay, so for uh, the APDE, uh, it's developed by NIST. So the objectives of this APDE is to, the first is to increase the productivity of AP developers. And second is, uh, is focused on uh, the uh, improvement of, like, like uh, in terms of the quality of uh, resulting draft standard. And also, it provides uh, software tools and even services, uh, cost, uh, which is customi customized to it to the needs of Stack AP developers. And like uh, the APDE architecture includes really like three main areas of functionality. Uh, the first is related to the document preparation and pub publishing. The second is about uh, repository services. And the last one is Express services. So this is uh, the basic like, structure of architecture of APDE. Uh, so for the uh, SGML, uh, it's kind of like a structure. Uh, yes. So it's uh, usually uh, the SGML authoring and publi publishing tools can uh, go to ISO standard, uh, in among which and the SGML database of staff standards can interact with uh, the AP information base web, web gateway. And besides, uh, SC4 uh, short names and can also interact with uh, the short names registry web, uh, web gateway. And uh, beside, uh, oh, on the other hand, like uh, the public Express models can also like uh, interact with Express servers. Uh, this is a birth of APDE, uh, which is focused on the uh, tracing of the mission critical tasks. So the initial APDE efforts focus on uh, enabling mission, uh, mission uh, critical AP development tasks uh, that are related to uh, interpretation of and validation process of AP development. Uh, besides, like uh, the uh, experience, like the uh, BDEX, and also short to long, no, short, short to low, uh, short to low, okay, uh, for generator. So for the step, uh, class library and also data probe. So this table is related to the express based APDE uh, tools. Uh, like in the first column, it is a tool name, like data probe, express, like pretty printing, and like uh, express server, and even express token, and even uh, fade ads, and also shop names, registry, and then uh, short to long and also step class library. Uh, so for the uh, the right column, the second column is 
uh, the descriptions for uh, each na each tool, each tool, and so for example, for the first, uh, the uh, the express the server, uh, which is kind of interface for remote uh, access to express based tools, and like here for the short to long and. Uh, it generates step express annotated long uh, form from uh, from the short form, and also like here's FedEx. It's kind of like a express parser. And uh, the second section is is related to the management of uh, documentation process. So. Uh, Later, like uh, APD efforts focused on the document management. So uh, in this like uh, process of document uh, document management, uh, usually like the document authoring and even publish publishing and electronic delivery, uh, also like a really like process. And besides, in order to allow like uh, the staff experts to focus on the technical. Like content of the documents, uh, instead of uh, on uh, instead of on the document uh, process itself, and the current uh, documentation process is one of the most uh, error prone and time consuming tasks in uh, AP development, and uh, the AP ADPE also like provided like the triple uh, W based uh, system called like, application protocol information. Uh, base uh, is called APIB, which is uh, focused on uh, the enforcement uh, it to uh, it to enforce the structural document requirements. And uh, meanwhile, it also focuses on uh, how to like uh, generate uh, the proper formatting and also uh, how to like verify those structures and for formats. Uh, this is uh, uh, ex uh, explanation about SGML environment. So NIST actually uh, built the first uh, SGML environment for step. Uh, the actually SGML stands for the standard general generalized mark uh, markup la language. So SGML is kind of uh, ASCO based markup language for describing the uh, structure and even the contents of documents in a computer like interpretable form, uh, like in terms of its capability and even complexity, uh, and, uh, just like a professor mentioned before, like uh, the HTML, like for the capability and complexity, H HTML is uh, less than XML and also X, uh, uh, which is the XML, which is also uh, less than SGML. Uh, and it's even for the history of SGML, so uh, it can be like uh, equal or even greater than uh, HTML, uh, which is also greater than equal to XML. Uh, and uh, besides, for SGML, the document types of definitions uh, was used to describe the structures and even the contents of documents. And uh, lastly, uh, the components of uh, NIST APDE include, uh, the first is about uh, DTD, uh, DTD uh, like a, develop, uh, develop a document type definitions uh, for staff documents. Uh, which uh, like uh, that are that define the content and even structural uh, requirements for that documents, and the second uh, is related to like AP uh, information base, and thirdly uh, is like SGML publishing uh, application, and lastly uh, is related to the utilities of uh, for the converting. Documents in property, property, proprietary in the formats uh, to and from the SGML. Uh, the second uh, this, uh, is related to the providing international access to standards. 
Okay, uh, first is Express Server. So usually it uh, provides an uh, email address, an uh, email access to uh, Express-based tools and even services for SO10303 uh, development. Like uh, for this uh, usage pros procedure, which is uh, which provide uh, which provides like uh, uh, for uh, the opportunities for the users uh, to like uh, simply submit an email address or the email request uh, that defines the tools or the services uh, which is based on the uh, desired plus of any quite in, uh, input information. And secondly, uh, the Express server uh, then generates the output and emails, emails uh, for the user about the result. And Express server can be used to uh, execute the playback and even uh, short to long, which I have mentioned before. Uh, and to build a schema a specific data probe. So the next one is about solids. So it provides the means of uh, geographically uh, dispersed uh, contributors to uh, communicate and disseminate and exchange uh, pertinent information as standard is developed. So sol uh, solids enhance the uh, ability to gain consensus on step. And Solis also contains more than like 900,000 files with average of like 4,000 uh, unique users uh, uh, who can uh, access this uh, its information on a monthly basis. And this is about uh, AP information base. So normally it's a uh, central repository uh, for repos uh, repository for uh, providing access to uh, I0303 documents. So most of its current contents is tagged in SGML. Uh, in, as, like, in this process, like, uh, uh, the, uh, it's, it focus, uh, like, it consists of, consists of, like, executing uh, queries against the standard parts and to get individual components it also uh, aims on searching against uh, the entire uh, uh, repository for I0303 documents with a specific like terms such as like a unit of functionality or express construct. So, uh, uh, but there is no freeware uh, inside of uh, like SGML browsers which can be available now. Okay, this, I think, is the end of my presentation, I think. You think so, you, you will start from my point two or three? Hmm. Like, so you, you, next time you will start from yeah, you can start from point two. Okay. Point four. Yeah. Point four? Okay, so, um, well, this section is related to uh, supporting of like uh, uh, administrative functions. Uh, the SC4 secretary uh, utilizes the office automation tools uh, to support its uh, administrative activities and other circumstances like, uh, in which uh, more than like, uh, 100 active projects are running now. And uh, also like four ballot circles are performed, and besides, like uh, 10 to 15 percent of leadership changes uh, every year by the, by the nature of uh, voluntary organization. Okay, this is actually, yeah, now it's in my presentation. Any questions?
What's the reason why NIST disappeared? Funding. Funding. See, after 57, my circumstance is doing, if that is finished, say, next year it can be finished, as I registered at the international standard, then we, we stop the project, yeah? Yes. No more. We, we should move to another, or, Okay, so we have a number of topics to discuss today, uh, and most of them are related to how to make a standard. So the best way, as the professor said, to uh, understand how to make a standard is to actually try and make one. So uh, just before today's class, I uh, came up with this idea for a standard for food recipes. So uh, let's, let's pretend that we're trying to make an, a new standard for making food recipes. So just like CAD, it's not enough to see the picture of the food to know how it was made or to modify the ingredients. So uh, maybe we want to make a standard for this. So I'm just going to show you this video here. <laughs> Oops, it's not showing. Okay, one moment. So um, this here is the meal, but you cannot tell how it was made. So let's just, um, just for fun, let's go through this video here. And the steps being followed is actually here. So we'll first just see the video, and then let's, let's try to figure out a way to standardize this. Like, how can you actually describe this process in a standard way? Uh, so we have a number of activities like adding something on top of something, like baking maybe, or uh, cooking, cutting, you know. You have these activities and then you have the portions. And it's actually a very interesting topic for a standard. <laughs> Anyways, that's enough. And uh, these here would be the steps. So there's a number of activities that we have, just like sketches mm -hmm. and extrudes, like preheating or folding or cutting something or putting something on top of something else. Anyways, it's, it's a hypothetical example. example. So uh, we can like discuss the steps needed to make such a standard. Like how would you start making a standard like this? What is the first step? What is the second step? What is the third step? Uh, what do you think is the right process? And then the professor maybe can correct us if something is wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay, so ingredient list. <laughs> Okay, so make an ingredient list. Uh huh. Each process, the process for each ingredient. What do you mean, the process for each ingredient? Okay, the relevant processes. For each ingredient. So you cannot cut oil, for example, but you can cut like cucumber or something. So, okay. 
Interesting. And make an order. Order of what? Order of the uh-huh. steps. Okay. Of processes. But this is for a specific meal, right? For a specific mm-hmm. recipe. Yeah. It's not like standard. Uh, you see what I mean? So we can make an ingredient list for all, all possible ingredients. We can make a, the relevant processes for each ingredient, like spilling or putting oil or cutting cucumber. These are all relevant processes. But the steps is uh, related to a certain, a certain model, if you like, a certain recipe. You know. so it's more of an, an, an exchange file than a standard, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so, uh, OK. But it's, it's, it's uh, interesting, so let's just keep it there. Size, okay. So we need to be able to capture the information of uh, maybe quantities. Or mm-hmm. So to capture this information, like how much oil we should put, mm-hmm. something like that, okay. What else do we need to have to make a standard? Think of the politics, like uh, maybe we don't need to do everything by ourselves. Maybe we can get experts to uh, make the standard. So they should agree maybe on who's going to use the standard. Let's let's think of that. (laughs) Uh I mean, it's up to you. You can share any ideas you want about this. What? Tools, okay. So, uh, <coughs> information on tools, right? Kitchen tools. Uh-huh, yeah. Kitchen tools. Okay. Temperature or like process controls in general. Process parameters maybe is the general word. Like kind of yeah. <laughs> so I hope you see how this relates back to CAD. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Process parameters would be something like the extrude length or something like that. Yeah, something like that. I'm not sure how this relates back to CAD, but okay. <laughs> sure. You know. Needed for cooking or needed for eating? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, both would be important, I guess. Cooking and uh, number of people who can be served. Who? Okay. Interesting. So all of this is relevant information. If you like, like this could be the, uh, uh, you know, AR. Like we can use this to make our ARM model. Like we need all this information to be captured by the by the standard, and then from the ARM model we can see how we can relate it back to the uh, uh, integrated resources. So this is our domain knowledge, sort of, or the information we need to capture. Okay. Any other ideas? Great. What? Grade. 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 Mm-hmm. They're rich. And okay. <laughs> cost. 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 
Faust dazu, wenn geht. Ja. Atmosphere, what do you mean exactly? Like? <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm not sure if that can be standardized, but <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't know. What do you mean by the mood for cooking? The light or the wine. <laughs> okay, interesting. So maybe like um, for the service or for the cooking? Cooking and service. Right, so maybe like um, um, so side kitchen or four <laughs> maybe like side dishes or I don't know. Um, yeah. Sure, atmosphere for <coughs> for eating maybe, not cooking. Uh huh. Interesting. <laughs> Right, so we have a quantity of ingredients, how much we should add up to each ingredient. Yeah, it can count as an ingredient, I guess. Okay. The recipe can be like Korean recipe or Indian recipe or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So you kind of got the idea. So you know, first we need to have the kind of information list, and uh, um, actually the, uh, the discussion was like open. Should like we, we should first have this information list, and then uh, we can maybe gather the experts to um, confirm that this is really everything we need, um, or the experts can gather first, and they can come up with this list. So I was thinking of more of the process, but it turned out to be more about the uh, actual uh, information content. But it's okay. Like, um, I mean, you got the idea. So the next topic, because of time, uh, is related to funding. So should we have, like, should standards be just um, sold or available for an access fee, or should we allow some advertisements in standards? So uh, some authors and publishers have been fighting the piracy of books by publishing online books with some advertisements in them. So each page has some section, like a footnote at the, at the, at the end with some advertisement. And this is kind of helping raise some funds even without selling the book. So uh, examples of industries based on advertisement is like media and sports industries. And it's very well known that these have a lot of money. Like they never run out of money, really because of advertisements, because there's always companies wanting to promote their products. And what do you think are the advantages and disadvantages of financing standards with advertisements? So uh, what's your thoughts on this? Is it good? Is it bad? Uh, should, should people think about it? Should not? Should they maybe, should they, maybe they shouldn't think about it? What's, what's your thoughts? Imagine opening an AP standard and you find a kimchi advertisement on there. <laughs> <laughs> that would be interesting. So, uh, what do you Pro think? Proper advertisement uh, can be helpful to promote the developers. Right. Yeah. What do you mean promote the developers? The company, you mean, sponsoring the product? Yeah. Okay. So sponsors can benefit from it. 
right? From advertisements. So it's not like a, a, they're not just giving funds, they're actually investing in the standard because it's, uh, it's allowing them to, to put their promotions on it. Interesting. Anyone can express that in the community. Uh-huh. Anyone? All right. Because it's free now, right? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Other ideas? What, what, what would be a disadvantage of this? <coughs> like, uh, mm, I think for other partners, they will uh, probably comprehend the, like, uh, the, like for the descriptions of what's in the... Like I'm sorry, the, can you repeat that? For its like, uh, features and the properties mm -hmm. and for its use. And so, like, uh, Advertisements can like help them to uh, get a comprehensive understanding of the standard. How is that? Like, like normally in, 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 a, in a TV, all kinds of advertisements, they are promoting uh, like a concrete, you know, for goods in, uh -huh. their, uh -huh. in, like, in their product. And like that, so like this kind of process, and uh, usually for uh, the advertisements of like standards, so... Advertisements of standards or advertisements in the standards, like um, at the bottom maybe of the standard document? Mm, just like related to the financing. Okay. Yes. So they can, like our users can get a better understanding of uh, the funding and the financing. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Sure. Users can get a better understanding of the <coughs> financing of the standard. Any other thoughts on this? I think the user using the standard are limited. It's not profitable. Right, right. Like only few people view the ads. I see. So they may not be uh, profitable for the company. Right. I see. But at least maybe it's a long term. So even if only like 10 people every month view the advertisement, but over five years or something, this will be a big number. So I don't know. Like I feel it's, it's more sustainable maybe. But it's, it's limited. So it is limited in size. Right? So only few people can view it, but these people will be increasing and they will remain there for a long time and the bigger the market and the more vendors there are the more people viewing the standards and so on uh, yeah okay so and maybe this also puts some kind of pressure on the standard developers to make it more accessible to even normal people right? so uh, put some pressure makers to make the standards more accessible to more people. Right. Any other ideas on this matter?
Right. Standards should be neutral, but they may be influenced by sponsoring the product. Did I get that right? Pretty much? But maybe we can, like, they can have some uh, shares, like a maximum uh, share of the funds for each company. Uh, yeah, but it's, it's like, uh, it's certainly a problem. If one company takes control over the standard, then it, it's hard for other companies to accept, mm -hmm. maybe. So, okay. Should we move on? There's one final topic here, uh, which is who should be making these tech implementations? Is it the software vendor or the actual users? Uh, maybe not any user, but s like set certain skilled users who can understand the, uh, the macro files, sort of, and they can make the translators. So who should be making the step in implementation? Should it be government controlled? Should the government force vendors to make an implementation before they release the product? Or should it be market driven? Like if someone needs it, then they will make it. Or maybe the vendor will make it because someone needs it. So. Do you think someone should force vendors to make an implementation, or it should be free? What do you think? Sure. I mean, I'm not sure how to write this down, but yeah, I, I get your point. Okay. So. Uh, yeah, but why can't the vendors also provide it? Like skilled users can help themselves and, and make their own translators, but wouldn't wouldn't it be easier if uh, like each software just makes its own standard? It's a lot easier for users. They don't need to make it from scratch. You know, it's a lot easier for exchange of, of data, sort of. I don't know. We can have more discussion for a few minutes and we can conclude this. Software vendors having skill, many skilled users. <laughs> okay, that's like middle yeah. solution. But, uh, right. Like, for example, should Katia be making its own implementation or should we sort of like volunteer to make a Katia implementation? You know? It's like you're not going to sell this to, uh, to Katia afterwards. <laughs> you know, so so the, one, the one benefiting the most is probably the company, the vendor. That's why I'm thinking maybe they should be making the effort and not the users. Right? They see the history. They, they, the government started the implementation as one name, different day. Mm -hmm. The NIST developed many software and services. And now it stopped. And then the, so that the sustainability of that kind of software should be go into the market driven more after a long time. It cannot be stay long with such as voluntary or government. Okay. So market driven is more sustainable.
So this is more about the procedures. Okay. Uh, thank you for your inputs, and uh, this is my last discussion. So thanks for, for the whole semester, I guess. Thank you. Good.